Michael Finley, you've just been announced as Offaly manager. When it kind of broke there a couple of days ago, I think half the hurling world was sitting at home going, how did this come about? How did it come about? Yeah, probably I was approached by the Offaly GA or in terms of would I be interested in taking on the manager's role. And uh, I suppose my first impressions was no, because I, I wasn't re maybe ready for a manager. I wasn't even thinking along those lines. And um, and I said I'd sit down and have a chat anyway, because they mentioned a vision and they mentioned you know, just the direction they want to go. And they thought that I had a skill set, I suppose, to look at. And it's obviously very privileged to be asked. Um, I suppose it was going to be a conversation more than anything. And then that night I couldn't really sleep a whole lot because I think about my background team and, and everything else. And... Uh, and it got me thinking more and more and I met the lads and like what they had to say and I suppose we spoke about the past and what happened and that because I had to iron out a few bits and pieces on my own side and I was happy to hear what they had to say basically and, and looking forward more more importantly in terms of what has to be done with Offaly. So uh, so that's where that went and uh, and then we had a few more, a couple of conversations, meetings and I suppose I gave my philosophy in terms of what I can do and again the lack of management experience was there and I kind of mitigate that against the knowledge I have. I lecture in the area of coaching and nutrition and injuries and um, I, I've had an interest this over the last four or five years so it wasn't something that I just decided to do and uh, I've been looking the whole time and observing a lot and it was a Keen O'Neill set up this year so I had a bit done but I'm doing a PhD at the moment as well so it's kind of you know look will I keep going with that and and because that's that's a full-time role as well and that was one thing that was holding me back I suppose from management. And as well there's, there's like a bit of a commute involved there's like people talk about 40 50 hours a week is all that stuff did you have to weigh all that up? Yeah without a doubt you know I have a, a wife and an eight month old so um, and obviously I'm lecturing so something I'll have to give you know and as up yesterday look at my doctor and see actually can I freeze that maybe or will I continue it for a couple of months so still weighing that up at the moment so there's uh, there's only so many hours in a day and in the week obviously but uh, but yeah look I was trying to calculate the hours myself and you could be up around you know 35 40 hours very easily and my phone my phone hasn't stopped in terms of just you know trying to organise the backroom team at the moment and, uh, and a lot of people are reaching out to in, in, in Offaly and other places to help out which is great as well so uh, and there's been a good response to, to the appointment but look for me I'm keeping my feet grounded I need to get my backroom team in place first of all um, I'm going to watch a game the weekend now as well up here in Offaly and uh, and really I'm, not, I'm actually looking forward to it I was nearly I was hoping to get announced nearly because it was kind of a bit of anxious about it I suppose but when it got announced and actually it was fine funnily enough And have you added anyone to the backroom team just yet because I suppose even with play with Bally Hale, I'm not sure what your injury situation is. Will you be able to get up to see matches as often as you want? And you probably need guys already kind of nailed down so that you can be like, okay, they'll do a bit of scouting for me. Yeah, without a doubt. So there's a couple of lads that, again, hasn't been finalised yet. So I'd say in about 10 days, I'll have it all finalised because they're, they're talking about 10 or 12 people, I'd say, easily. And again, they have family commitments and they have work commitments. So it's very, very difficult. And even to meet up for a coffee, it actually, it, it takes a couple of days to organise. So um, so that's that's making good progress. Um, and again, as I said, uh, thankfully, up at Nofley GA here and the county board, they actually look after uh, the club games in terms of video on it. So I actually have all the videos of all the club games. So that's something, again, I can watch from home. But but I will get up as much as I can to watch the games and obviously there's one or two people up here that I know that I've met and I trust and they have good knowledge on the, the, the club hurling and again I'll be tapping into them and, and look come obviously in around October, November I'll be putting a panel together and I might, I might, I might organise a trial or two as well maybe because I need to see as many players as I can um, and, and this, this won't be a lockdown panel either, it'll be an open panel because players will be coming in and coming out depending on how they're performing. And you, how hard do you think it's going to be to get all the best players in Offaly back together? Because even Eddie Brennan found it a bit of a challenge and he spoke about and couldn't understand why everyone wouldn't talk out. And there was all these issues with players not being on the panel and then drafted straight back in and on the team. And so it, it, there's certainly a challenge there. Yeah, there's potentially a challenge there. But look, I think if you want to play for Offaly Hurling, uh, for your county, I think it's, it's an easy decision, to be honest. And forget about politics and forget about club controversies or whatever it is. You know, At the end of the day, if you enjoy playing Hurling, you want to play for your county. I'm here as a manager, I'll have a good backroom team behind me and we're going to be putting in everything and anything into each one of those players and uh, we're going to build a strong culture, building back Offaly's identity again with this new group of players and looking forward, again there's always talk about the past and the 80s and 90s about the great players have gone by and there were great players but that's the past as well, you know, there's good traditions there but we have to look forward as well and, and create a new bit of history maybe with this new team, so so that's where I'm looking at and I don't I don't like getting caught up in, in any, doubt, any, doubt, any that kind of stuff, you know, at the end of the day it's hurling and that's what's all about. And like some people would say, oh, why would you join a sinking ship? But surely the flip side is, if you get everyone talking out, if you get the guys prepared physically, I mean, obviously you have that background, that the only way is up. Yeah, well, look, you can go sideways as well, uh, so you can. And 
look, it, it's not as simple as that. Only, on, I don't think people are saying that throwing ways up. Only ways up after maybe a couple of years even. Like it could take a bit of time as well. But I suppose the key with me is um, I, I always felt that there was good hurlers in Offaly and I said I have a good relationship in terms of our, our club playing Offaly teams over the years. There's always a good brand of hurling in Offaly. One of my toughest games I've ever played was in 2008 in the championship against Offaly. Um, it was up in, I think it was up in Port Leash. Uh, one of the toughest games I've ever played. I, I got two teeth knocked out even in it. It wasn't a dirty game, but it was a heavy hitting game. And I was spoke to Michael Rice months later. He said the exact same. He was centre forward that day and he said, one of the toughest games. So, so like that's, I know that's probably 10 odd years ago, but there's still, I think, you know, that, that brand is there and, and that hunger is there and that uh, ambition is there, I think. Uh, and like, I mentioned this to you before, we did a benefit night recently about how in 2017, I think it was, you came up and you were almost telling Cody what to do on the sideline. Now, obviously, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but like, yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, the, the point being that you clearly have had an interest in, you know, looking out on the field and seeing what you can move around to make a difference. Yeah, it, it's, look, I can't stop thinking about it, to be honest about it. I hear Derek McGrath talking about the obsession nature and I'd say I'll have a small touch of that in terms of finding it hard to switch off, you know, and that's something I will need to do now because obviously this is going to be a fairly full-time role. Um, but but I love it, and as I said I love talking about, it, I love thinking about it, and um, and if you love something, yeah, you know, why not go ahead and do it? Um, and it's a matter of just getting the balance right. Do you have a, a hurling philosophy? Is it sort of? Do you feel like there's any particular team style that you think that's the sort of way that uh, I like? I want my team to play. I think, look, not to go into so much detail, I think you have to adapt to every game. So I, th I don't think you can have a certain style that will work for everyone. And I think you have to be able to adapt in the field. And I think players have to be, have to be able to adapt. And for me on the sideline, very hard to be getting instruction in the whole time. So my thought process even at the moment is, you know, players have to be able to make those decisions. Give, give them that leadership role where actually this is not working. We, we can change this ourselves. Because when it comes to the crunch, and comes to bigger games and even finals or semi-finals, uh, that's when you need a player standing up and being able to actually think for themselves. So instead of you know management spoon feeding players, I think they're hurling all their lives. They, they know how to play hurling as well, and it's about trusting them and and giving them the empowerment. I think and and look, I, I'm very much. I know that there's different personalities, and people will learn different ways, and, and they respond different ways. So again, I'm very clued into that, and and I've high standards to be honest. And I've I've come from I suppose a county that have high standards. I've come from a club that had high standards, and even personally myself, I've I've a lot of values and high standards that that will need to be met I think up here and uh, and that's important and and if we can meet those high standards and that they'll set themselves as well but then then we have something maybe strong and that we can actually go forward with. Is there anything that you would have learned from being in a dressing room under Brian Cody or Henry Shefflin that you think I'd like to bring this to my own management? Um, look, I've probably learned a lot of things um, you know, in particular with Brian obviously because we were with him for 12 years and obviously Henry was, was here with us um, for, for a year and I think what Henry's you know what I really really liked about what he did with Ballyhale he, he went back to basics and kept things really grounded um, you know in terms of like going to hotels or any this kind of stuff you know for the, for the All-Ireland the Club All-Ireland we went up to Nafina and we had a few sandwiches there that actually uh, our club people came up um, and actually made for us and, and made tea and that and it was so low key uh, and again the easy option is to go to a hotel you know so small things like that, I think it meant a lot for me to actually get back to the club, get back to what's important, and and I really really liked that. And you know, went away from any kind of professionalisation or any of that kind of stuff. Just kept it all simple. And what about your own hurling career? You're only what 34, and you're an All Ireland winning club captain this year as well. Do you think you'll be able to continue on? Yeah, I'm hoping to rehab this knee anyway and get get back to full health. And hopefully, if I get back in time, I potentially will be back playing with the lads. So. I, I can't really comment in terms of will I be back or not because this knee really is dependent on how it actually recovers so we'll see how that goes basically um, and look my obviously I've, I've had a lot of injuries over the years and you know the Christie ring ends either way at the end of June and, and club championship doesn't, doesn't kick off till um, August slash September it's probably September to be honest so there's still time there to still play hurling if I, if I want to um, so that's obviously a nice fallback option and it keeps it open and one final thing then, uh, just reflecting on Kilkenny against Tip in the All-Ireland final, what was your read on that? Is it too simplistic to just say the red card turned it? No, no, the red card didn't turn it. It obviously had a big bearing on the game, but um, like Tipperary were going, uh, but Niall O'Mara's goal was, was key, was critical, and that kind of kicked them off, and they gathered momentum, they got a couple of points, and unfortunately, I suppose, right after half-time, Tipperary got a goal, and that kind of killed any hope that kind of early Kilkenny had, and they really, Tipperary got to grips with the game, and unfortunately, we were losing individual battles as well. You know, whatever the spare man, it was the individual battles we were losing, and that didn't help things, obviously. So, uh, very disappointing for the players, obviously, and again, it's sending off made things so much harder for the players but you know, we're all hoping for a big performance and I think they're probably more disappointed than anything you know, 
but what they've done this year was savage and beating Limerick was, was unbelievable uh, and obviously beating Cork as well so you know I, I have huge respect for all the players and the commitment, commitment that they put in is, is savage every year and I think everyone's actually proud of them this year more than anything When I reflected on the final and the amount of like long ball towards the end I was thinking maybe it's even a victim of how well TJ had done against Galway when he caught all those balls the team went down to eventually 13 men that still plan A was no matter what just get to TJ and maybe that was kind of the downfall Yeah again right it's not as simplistic as that as you're saying because you're 7 or 8 points down Okay, what do you need to get? You need to get goals. Okay, realistically, and if I, the lads default to that, maybe, uh, maybe a bit soon. And who's the best catcher in the game in, in Ireland? TJ Reid is up there, probably with Joe Canning and some of these lads. You know, he's in the top three, I'd say. So why not hit in top, a few high balls? If you got a goal back, next thing, then you know we can cause trouble. If you can get to get one or two of those goals, people will say that's the greatest game plan ever. You know, so it's easy, kind of in hindsight, to say, oh yeah, that was the wrong option. For me, definitely, yeah, bang in two or three balls. But then let's work the wings and let's work it up through the lines if that wasn't working. And unfortunately. You know, the lads probably they, they f- probably found that maybe we're seven, eight, nine points away. We need goals quickly, and the quicker we get the ball up there, the faster we can maybe get one. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't blame anyone in that to be honest. Just the way the game went, and Tipperary were, were well on top, as I said, and they were winning those individual battles. Uh, like the ball wasn't breaking on the ground. You know, it's two or three Tipperary lads coming out with catching balls, uh, so it was just unfortunate. And, and Tipperary were the better team on the day, and, and that's simple as that.